In this video, we'll be using Kaya to install all of the parts of Clipper that we want onto our Raspberry Pi. This series is sponsored by PCBWay. This is the second video in a series which shows how to complete each part of the Clipper setup. In the first video, I showed you how to install an operating system onto your Raspberry Pi. So if you haven't done that, go back and watch that video first. If you have installed an operating system on your Raspberry Pi, then hopefully you'll also have it powered up and connected to your Wi-Fi or have it connected to your network by plugging in an Ethernet cable. What we're going to do next is what's called SSH into our Raspberry Pi, which is basically just connecting to it remotely through our Wi-Fi network from our PC or Mac. This will enable us to send it some simple commands which will get Clipper and everything Clipper needs installed on the Raspberry Pi. Personally, I use PuTTY for this, but if you have another option, then feel free to use it. Download and install whichever software you're going to use, and if you're using PuTTY, once you open it, this is what you'll see. Remember that host name that we set up when we were putting the operating system on the Raspberry Pi's SD card? Well, this is where we're going to use it. My host name was just Raspberry Pi, all lowercase with no spaces, so I'm going to type Raspberry Pi dot local, and then hit open. If you can't connect with your hostname for some reason, then you're going to need to find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. The easiest way to do this is most likely going to be to log in to your router and find your connected devices. In the list of connected devices, you should find something called something like Raspberry Pi with an IP address next to it. If you don't know how to log into your router, then it's very likely that it will have some sort of instructions or an IP address written on it. You can then put this IP address into a browser on another computer on the same network and then log in to your router with a password that should also be written on it. This was exactly how I found my Raspberry Pi's IP address. So my IP address is 192.168.0.70. So I can just type that in. I don't need the dot .local. And then instantly I connect. Once we have PuTTY open, we're going to log in as simply Pi and then our password, which was Raspberry. And now we're in. So we use our host name or IP address in PuTTY to tell PuTTY which device we want to connect to. And then once the prompt is open, the SSH window, we type in our username and password to log in to the actual Raspberry Pi. So what we are going to do now is tell the Raspberry Pi to go and find and use a program effectively from the internet to install Clipper and make everything a lot easier. All we're going to need is Kaya, which is K-I-A-U-H. We want the GitHub. And what you will see here, again, linked in the description, if you scroll down, you will see the instructions for how to add an operating system to your Raspberry Pi, which is what we've already done. You keep scrolling down until you get to download and use Kaya. Now, from the instructions, Kaya is a script that assists you in installing Clipper on a Linux operating system that has already been flashed to your Raspberry Pi's SD card. Kaya is an acronym for Clipper Installation and Update Helper. I say Kaya, if I'm wrong, whatever. So below this, you'll find three lines of code, which we are simply going to copy and paste. So on the right hand side, there's a little copy icon on a Windows PC, you left click there, go back to our putty screen and just right click. There's no need to um, do control V or anything like that. It just pastes in with a right click on Windows machines. I'm afraid I don't know what it does on a Mac as I don't have one. So once we've right clicked, we then hit enter and the Raspberry Pi will then through the internet download this installation helper. This will just take a minute or so and then we'll be ready for the next stage. This gives me a great opportunity to tell you about PCBWay CNC capabilities. Before home 3D printers became a thing, CNC machining was the only real way of getting a three-dimensional object off of your screen and into your hand. And it's still the number one way to machine strong components from all kinds of materials. PCBWay have three and five axis as well as turning capabilities, and no job is too small for them. 
Next time you want a three-dimensional part that needs to be stronger than anything your 3D printer can produce, then give them a try for a quick free quote. And perfect timing, it's done. Once we see the Pi at Raspberry Pi prompt, we're ready for the next line. So again, we simply left click to copy the line and then right click to paste it in. This one's much quicker. And then the last one simply starts Kaya. So clip at installation and update helper. And now it's simply just a case of following the on-screen instructions to install all of the different parts of Clipper that we want. So for instance, to begin with, we want to install, which is option one. Hit one and then enter. And then the next thing is to actually install Clipper itself, which again is option one. So we hit one and enter. And then we get the option of which version of Python we want to use. I have no idea. And it says recommended Python 3. X. So let's go recommended. Please select the number of Clipper instances to set up. Now the number of Clipper instances is basically how many printers you've got. You need a different instance of Clipper for every machine you want to control. I'm just going to start with one. So just one again, and then it will go and install Clipper. Towards the end, you'll get asked if you want to add user pi to the group, say yes. Once it's done, just do exactly the same with everything else you want to install. If you've never used Clipper before and don't know what you need, then my advice would be to install obviously Clipper itself and then Moonraker, Fluid and Mainsail, and then Crow's Nest. If you're going to add a touchscreen like I am, then also install Clipper screen. At certain points, you may need to put your login details in again or answer a couple of simple questions. If you've got options of what to install, just go for the default. That's what I did all the way through. If at any point your Raspberry Pi needs to restart, then just remember that you'll need to SSH back in using PuTTY or whatever you used in the same way that you did to begin with, whether that be using your username.local or your IP address. Once you've SSH'd back into your Raspberry Pi, then you'll need to add that last line of the Kaya page, which starts Kaya again. You don't need to do the first two. They are just to install it. If like me, you decide to install Mainsail and Fluid, then it will tell you whichever one you installed first is already using port 80, and you need to choose another port. Just choose 81, unless you know otherwise. When it asks if you want to download the necessary macros, click yes. Once you've installed everything you want to, you can simply close the session and then restart your Raspberry Pi. Once it's booted back up, you should be able to open a web browser and then type in your host name into the address bar and then connect through the web interface, which is a lot easier to use. So you can either use the raspberrypi.local hostname if that worked for you in PuTTY, but it didn't for me, so I'm going to type in the IP address, which I use to SSH in in the first place, which is 192.168.0.70. And then we have the mainsail web user interface. You will see some errors here, which is fine. We're going to sort those. If you've got to this stage, then you have put an operating system on your Raspberry Pi, installed Clipper, and at least mainsail, but you will have also installed some other stuff in the background. If you want to see what you've installed, then click on machine and you'll see some configuration files down below. These configuration files have all of the needed information to talk to your 3D printer, but also to allow you to connect to the Raspberry Pi and your Clipper installation through a web browser or any other way you're going to do it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to find a configuration file for your 3D printer and then how to save it. Click here to go to that video now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.